Let's just hop straight into the benchmarks today. So we're seeing the 6800 XT, the 7900 XT, and the 7900 XTX, and currently we're looking at Unreal Engine 5.1 with new features like Lumen and Nanite. And some of you guys are like, why are we testing Fortnite? This is the only game with Unreal Engine 5.1 that is fully released. And like I said, gets us the new features like Nanite. Notice the trees as you go towards them. There's no level of detail popping. They fade in smoothly. We've got amazing Amazing lighting, so I know this game's going for a cartoony sort of look, so some people aren't going to be as impressed as I think they should be by the lighting system. But regardless, this is the game engine of the future for many AAA franchises, and we're looking at it right now at the 1440p epic settings with the hardware accelerated ray tracing turned off. Lumen itself is kind of a software based ray traced lighting system as I understand it. And here we're seeing uh, the 6800 XT not holding a 60 frame per second average. If we turn on hardware ray tracing, uh, the GPUs don't take a massive hit, but they do take a hit. And if you're looking at the frame rate counters up top and are a little bit confused, the instantaneous frame rate is on the left. The average frame rate of the benchmark run accumulating as we go is in the middle, and the 1% lows are on the right. You can also see a frame time graph along the bottom. Uh, and so stutters in the frame time graph uh, would get you an idea of how uh, stuttery the actual gameplay would feel. A smoother frame time graph is better. And here we can see that while the 7900 XT in the middle is holding about a 60 FPS average by the end of the benchmark run, it did dip below, and only the 7900 XTX was really holding over 60 FPS. So on the 6800 XT and the 7900 XT, but not the XTX, I decided to look at what if we used some image upscaling. Now, this version of Fortnite does not feature FSR or DLSS for that matter. It is using TSR upscaling, which is the one that will be built into the Unreal Engine, although um, Unreal Engine should, 5 should still be compatible with FSR 2 and DLSS. It just hasn't been updated into this game at this time. Uh, so we're looking at TSR quality, which is the same upscaling you know, percentage that we'd see on something like FSR quality. And that is getting both of these GPUs at their maxed out 1440p settings up over 60 FPS, but you're just having to use upscaling to do it. If we wanted to look at getting them all over 60 FPS, and uh, including the 6800 XT, but the 7900 XT and the XTX, uh, to high refresh rate experience here, if you just go down to the high setting, which still keeps Lumen, it still keeps Nanite, um, but it does turn down those settings as well as some others, um, and I've also turned off the hardware accelerated ray tracing for another little boost to the performance. We now see all three of the GPUs doing well. Now, throughout all of these uh, Fortnite tests, we're seeing a fairly similar split percentage-wise. If you're looking in the bottom left corner, you see the percentages. I've set the 6800 XT as the baseline, and the 7900 XT seems to be around 30% faster throughout these uh, Unreal Engine tests, and the 7900 XTX is coming in uh, you know, not quite 50% faster, but, you know, getting close. Uh, now I'm looking at what if we went down to 1080p and completely maxed it out, including with the hardware accelerated ray tracing. We see all uh, the, the 7000 series GPUs doing very well here. Um, the 6800 XT is also doing okay, averaging over 60 FPS, although the 1% lows on the 6800 XT are dipping below 60. Uh, so not complete lock there, although those are some pretty uh, heavy settings that we're looking at. Now, speaking of heavy settings, what if we went up to 4K? This is the epic setting, but with the hardware ray tracing turned off. And we're looking now at about 30 FPS on the 6800 XT. The 7900 XT and the XTX are certainly faster by 33% and 57% respectively, but neither of them is delivering anywhere near a 60 FPS experience. So um, we'll probably need to look at turning down the settings a little bit here, but I'll also mention if you're looking at those percentage differences, um, since we've set the 6800 XT as the baseline, don't assume that the 7900 XTX is, you know, 24% faster than the XT if you compare them directly, right? We're looking at the, the 6800 XT as that baseline. Hey, we're gonna go ahead and turn the settings down to high. If we do that, and again, still have the hardware accelerated RT off, now the 7900 XTX 
is getting us around a 60 FPS average, although 1% lows do dip below 60, whereas the 6800 XT and 7900 XT are, well, not giving us a 60 FPS experience. So, in other words, uh, using these GPUs at 4K, even with reduced settings, uh, you do have to think about how viable that is. What kind of, Now, the thing is, you can certainly turn settings down further, and that's what we're going to do here in just a second. Um, but just think about, you know, if you want to play at 4K, it's very expensive if you don't want to turn down settings. So looking at the XTX, if we go down, down to the high settings with the hardware accelerated ray tracing turned off, and now we upscale, in this case using TSR quality again, uh, this is using a 1440p baseline resolution and then using the upscaling algorithm to output a 4K-like image. It does look pretty good, but I can, at least on my very large 4K monitor, tell a difference. There's a little bit more softness to it, all of that. But the overall performance has bumped up quite significantly, with even the 6800 XT uh, delivering a well over 60 FPS experience, even in the 1% lows, and the uh, 7900 XT and XTX are actually pretty high refresh rate experiences now. So in other words, can you use these at 4K in an Unreal Engine 5 game? Absolutely, you do just need to turn down settings. But let's jump to a different engine. Now we're looking at Plague Tale Requiem. We're starting out at 1440p ultra settings. And I'm using a little intro cinematic as the benchmark run here. Uh, for the side-by-sides, but keep in mind that some scenes of the game are certainly more demanding than this intro cinematic. Um, but this is one of the most demanding games out there. I also think it's one of the most beautiful games. The character work you're seeing here I actually think is one of the weakest points of the game's visuals. Um, the actual environments and lighting and everything like that I think are its strong points, but this is a game that's not cross-gen. It's not trying to support the older gen consoles. It's designed to push a PS5 and a Series X to their absolute limits. Um, but we see all of the AMD GPU GPUs we're testing here doing very well, with even the 6800 XT having its 1% lows over 60 FPS in this, this scene. There are, like I said, more demanding areas of the game. However, if we try to jump up to 4K Ultra, uh, we're now seeing all of the GPUs struggling a bit more with um, only, even the 7900 XTX delivering below 60 FPS in this scene, although its average is above. And as you, like I said, walk forward in the scene in the game, things get a little more demanding. I've seen my XTX dip down around 50 FPS in more demanding scenes uh, that I've tested. So this game is very demanding at 4K. This is another game that does not feature FSR, although it does have its own resolution scaling option. It has a quality setting, but I can't confirm whether that resolution is actually a 1440p baseline. Performance-wise, I suspect it's actually higher than 1440p. It's difficult to say. Uh, but now um, the 7900 models are delivering us over 60 FPS here whereas the 6800 XT is still well below. And we could have turned down settings further, but let's hop into another game. Now, the Callisto Protocol is an Unreal Engine 4 game, but it's one of the most uh, demanding and uh, graphically impressive Unreal Engine 4 games that we've seen. That being said, I'm not sure it's the most optimized experience with certain areas in this benchmark run as well as the game itself dipping pretty heavily. Uh, but at 1440p Ultra here, we can see all the GPUs with the 1% lows very low. And I think, you know, that, that's kind of an issue with this game itself. The average frame rates are doing very well for all of them. So I think you'd do okay playing this game, just realize you're going to hit some areas of the game that just don't perform well, really on any GPU. Now, if we bump it up to the 4K Ultra settings, again, we'll see... Uh, corridors like this, where the frame rates are dipping into the 30s. Uh, but then as we come out of this corridor, frame rates bump up pretty high. So again, frame rates all over the place. The averages start to pick up and come out pretty well here. Now this game does feature FSR. In fact, it doesn't feature DLSS. This is an AMD-sponsored title. Um, so you could play around with the FSR settings for sure. Uh, if you wanted a boost here. 
And as long as you don't have ray tracing enabled, um, FSR does a pretty good job of boosting the frame rates. If you do have ray tracing enabled, like we're looking at here at 1440p, and I've kicked them all the way up to the maximum, um, then you can run into some other kind of bottleneck. It seems like the ray tracing hits the CPU hard, but in a very single threaded manner, where even the fastest CPUs can get a bit bogged down in certain scenes. Uh, notice the, the GPU utilization drops well below 100% at times on the 7900 XDX, especially here. Um, so you can use something like FSR to try to boost frame rates, but that doesn't really relieve the CPU bottleneck very much. Um, so it has, you know, limited effectiveness. That being said, they all did average-wise do pretty well there. But let's go ahead and jump into Cyberpunk 2077 at the 1440p Ultra settings. So here we're seeing um, very good performance, I would say, from all of the GPUs. Now, Cyberpunk is about two years old now, but it, at its ultra settings, is still one of the most demanding games we've seen from that time period, and it can look very, very good. Uh, here we're seeing um, all of the GPUs delivering a high refresh rate experience, um, with the XT and the XTX uh, on the 7000 series, even keeping the 1% uh, lows uh, above 90, which is really nice to see. I mean, for me personally, when I think about a high refresh rate experience, um, I, I don't know, there's something about 90 FPS that's kind of a magic number for me, in a first-person game especially, where just the camera panning uh, feels a lot quicker and smoother and... Um, you don't see as many individual frames or any of that, but uh, putting up good performance here uh, with the ultra settings at 1440p. Now that being said, if you try to jump up to 4K using the ultra settings and you don't upscale or turn anything down, uh, then this becomes a bit more difficult. However, it looks like the 7900 XTX on the right actually stretches its legs a little bit here at this more demanding setting. And we're seeing a 62% lead over the 6800 XT, uh, which is um, a bit higher than we've seen in some of the other tests. So that's another thing that I could have been pointing out a little bit more, but if you watch those percentage differences in that bottom left corner, kind of scroll back through the YouTube video, uh, looking at the different games, you'll see that the percentage lead varies pretty widely throughout these tests. Um, that being said, if we jump into the actual frame rate numbers here, the XTX is giving us an over 60 FPS experience uh, throughout this benchmark run, whereas the XT is not. It's getting close, and the 6800 XT is, well, I mean, you could play it at these settings, but you'd probably want to turn down settings instead. Now, if we do turn down settings, if we go down to the high settings, as well as enable upscaling, this game has been updated with FSR 2.1, and using it at the quality preset to render the game at 1440p, and then use temporal data and sharpening and the like to uh, try to give you a 4K-like image, it looks pretty good, but like I said, I, I can see some deficiencies to the image. Um, but these settings would be very realistic on all of these GPUs, and I would say that the 7900 XT and XTX are now giving us a legitimately high FPS experience, at least talking for like single player titles. Um, and the 6800 XT is also giving us a very, very comfortable experience. So I think for a lot of people, these would probably be something like the settings that you would actually play this game at. Now keep in mind, it's often best to tweak things individually rather than just use the presets. Uh, some people are like, why don't you use more optimized settings in your in your benchmarks? Well, I like to stick to the game's preset settings so that other people can run their GPUs at the same settings easily to compare. Although, keep in mind, in this game, it has trouble saving your settings. It's a little bit annoying. But anyway, speaking of looking at some presets, what if we said, oh, well, at 1440p, we had all that performance headroom. Why don't we turn on some ray tracing? In fact, why don't we turn on all the ray tracing and go to the RT Ultra preset? Well, I'll also mention, actually, that this isn't turning on all the ray tracing. There is a lighting uh, setting that goes all the way up to Psycho that is not enabled uh, through the RT Ultra preset. But anyway, 
If you try to run this preset at its native resolution, which speaking of presets, you actually have to turn off FSR manually because going to this uh, preset turns on FSR. So I did force it into native resolution here. And we are seeing all of the GPUs struggling. Now, relative performance wise, we're seeing once again, um, you know, a little over 60% lead, so 64% lead for the 7900 XTX over the 6800 XT, um, and a 44% lead for the 7900 XT over the 6800 XT. So there's, you know, definitely performance gains here at ray tracing, but they're not, they kind of seem to be scaling similarly to what we saw uh, from the other, um, fr from the rasterized performance gains. However, I wanted to investigate in more detail how each of the different ray traced settings affects the performance. Um, I've noticed that the AMD GPUs seem to especially struggle with the ray traced reflections in Cyberpunk. So I decided to look at what if we just took the 1440p ultra settings and then enabled ray traced reflections and left it at the native resolution. You can see that the 7900 XTX is now only 46% faster than the XT, which is not out of line um, compared to what we saw in other games, but is a drop from what we just saw on other tests in Cyberpunk, which is kind of interesting. Um, but actually, it's nice to see that the 7900 XT and XTX can deliver pretty playable frame rates here. I think you could consider using the ray traced reflections if you're just looking for a 60 frame per second-ish target, especially on the XTX model, uh, with fewer dips, but not no dips below 60 frames per second, whereas the XT would probably want to upscale or turn down the uh, turn down the the settings a little bit. Now let's look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and I don't know if I'll fix it in editing, but it looks like I, I misspelled that in my uh... <laughs> anyway. Uh, I might fix it again in editing. I don't need to dwell on that. But this is a game where all of these graphics cards from AMD absolutely excel compared to their NVIDIA counterparts. Now, I don't have an NVIDIA GPU in this particular benchmark today, so we're not really seeing it. Um, but you can just see that the actual just numbers we're putting out here are quite high. The, um, these are the 1440p extreme settings, so I realized that most people who play this competitively would actually turn down the settings. But guys, even if you didn't, the 6800 XT um, is even delivering a well over 100 FPS average, whereas the XT 7900 XT and XTX uh, are pushing more into that 200 range. And the GPU scaling here seems to give us kind of that 100%, 140%, 161% kind of scaling. Um, I, although I did want to turn it down to uh, the 1440p balanced settings, and again, um, actual competitive players might have a different exact competitive setting um, than just using the balanced preset, but I think that the balanced preset gets closer to what competitive players might actually use um, to get their competitive edge. Every little millisecond counts, right? Uh, so here, we're seeing even the 6800 XT getting averages not quite to 200 frames per second, but I mean, not too far off with even the 1% lows right now over 120. Whereas the 7900 XT um, is, you know, at times hitting 300 FPS with the 1% lows over 168 and the 7900 XTX is averaging almost 300 frames per second with the 1% lows at 184. Now, I will mention that in this game, um, if you're playing the Battle Royale mode, so this is benchmarking the Call of Duty multiplayer, but if you went to the Battle Royale mode, um, especially at extremely reduced graphic settings and resolutions, you're more likely to hit CPU limits uh, than you are to hit GPU limits. And even here, um, in this benchmark, if I drop down to 1080p at the balance settings like we're seeing here, Notice that the 7900 XTX is now only showing 39% faster than the 6800 XT, which while isn't completely out of line from what we saw in some other benchmarks we've done, it's um, a little out of line from what we saw in this game, which is indicating that there's some CPU limitation, meaning um, the, the GPU could do more if the CPU and RAM could push more frames to it. And if you watch the GPU utilization percentage on the XTX, 
um, you, you do see it dip further below 100% than the other GPUs do, do at times. Now, they're all, all delivering excellent performance at these settings, um, but of course the XTX is delivering the best overall average, um, but like I said, was held back a little bit by the CPU. If we go to the 4K extreme settings, so we're just like, what if you just wanted to absolutely crank this game um, at 4K? Uh, well, the good news is they can all deliver a pr perfectly playable, uh, you know, the, even the 6800 XT here uh, is well over 60 FPS most of the time, although the 1% lows do dip below, below that. Uh, so the more competitive players wouldn't like this, but for people who, you know, just want to play the game and have it look nice on their 4K screen and aren't too competitive, uh, you could could crank it. And the 7900 XT and XTX are actually delivering pretty high refresh rates, um, even at 4K extreme settings here. And now, again, the, X, the 7900 XTX is not held back by the CPU here, and we're seeing it fully show off its 63% lead over the 6800 XT, um, which again is one of the um, higher leads that we see throughout our tests. So it, it's kind of interesting to see how the different architectures do in different games, which is why I'm bringing up Forza Horizon 5. We're looking at the 4K Extreme setting, and the good news is all three of these GPUs are delivering good enough frame rates that I think you would enjoy your experience in this game, and not really question it. However, if you look at these relative to each other, we can see that S S AMD's 7000 series does not like this game, at least especially compared to its predecessor. Uh, AMD's 6000 series GPUs actually perform very well in this game. The 7000 series kind of doesn't, so either something to do with the drivers or some change in the architecture, there were some major architectural changes here, we're only seeing the XTX 31% ahead of the 6800 XT and the 7900 XT only 60, 16% of over the 6800 XT. Um, I'd like to see if maybe AMD could uh, do something here with some kind of drivers or look at what's going on here because it's um, kind of weird to see this result. Uh, so I did also want to look at some other games as well, like God of War, and here we're seeing at the 4K Ultra settings. And one reason I wanted to look at this game was this is a DX11 game rather than a DX12 game, and I wanted to see if we saw anything unusual happening here. But no, this looks like it's more back to what I'm starting to consider kind of showing the uh, full potential of the XTX versus, uh, the, you know, where we're seeing it kind of over 60% faster than the 6800 XT, which seems to be the result that we get in enough of the games to say that this maybe could be a typical result if it was, you know, performing at its fullest. I can't guarantee you that this is, you know, performing at its fullest. Maybe through future driver updates we'd get even more, but all of the GPUs are doing well here. However, the 6800 XT is, does dip below, uh, below 60 FPS at times, whereas the um, 7900 XT and XTX are giving you a good, good experience at 4K. Um, uh, pretty high refresh rate. And if we drop down to 1440p ultra settings, uh, we're seeing similar scaling between the GPUs. Um, and now just all of them are delivering us a much higher refresh rate experience. So the 6800 XT, I think, would be more at home here at um, 1440p. Now, uh, another thing I should mention about this particular area I'm using for the benchmark, um, <clears throat> getting side-by-side -side captures is easiest during cutscenes. However, the actual gameplay that happens is often more demanding than the cutscenes. So as Kratos turns this corner and you would actually get control of the camera here, you'll notice that the the frame rates actually drop a bit, and this is more indicative of what you'd see in actual gameplay, is what you're seeing on the current frame rate counter here, rather than the averages. The averages, though, are giving us the good uh, scaling between the GPUs. Um, uh, before we go, I did want to take a look at Horizon Zero Dawn. This is another game, similar to God of War, that was kind of a, a PS4 um, original that eventually made its way over to PC. However, while it seemed like AMD's 7000 series really liked God of War, 
Uh, it doesn't seem like they're quite as fond of Horizon Zero Dawn. They're performing very well, even maxed out at 4K. Um, we can see averages around 100 FPS, you know, over that for the XTX and a little below it for the XT. But they're, you know, this the 7900 XT is only about 19% faster than the 6800 XT here, and the 7900 XTX uh, is about 40% faster than the 6800 XT. So I think AMD's 7000 series needs to come down in price because the thing is we saw the 6800 XT in this video, its relative performance, but what is the current price of a 6800 XT? Well, it's been easy to get them in the five to $600 range for months now, brand new on sites like Amazon and Newegg. However, those deals are getting a little harder to find as I think the 6000 series price uh, stock is probably starting to dry up now. But as recently as literally yesterday on my community page where I post uh, particularly good PC uh, hardware deals that I spot, um, I had one again in stock brand new on Amazon for $570. So if we take that as okay, a, a good value for a 6800 XT, and then we scale up from there, what does current pricing look like? Well, what we're going to need to look at is what do we think about, um, about the average performance of these cards? So let's do a couple of things. First of all, the 6800 XT that we set as the baseline here, um, it had an MSR, MSRP of $650 when it launched. And I understand there's been inflation since there and all of that. Um, and then there's that current pricing we saw yesterday, brand new, for 570. Now, where am I getting these times 1.3 and times 1.5? Well, if you go back through my benchmarks, um, the performance range was all over the place. The 7900 XT seemed to range anywhere from a worst case scenario of only about 20% faster than a 6800 XT, up to as high as over 40% faster, but I thought a more typical result was kind of in the middle at about 30% faster. And then a similar thing happened with the XTX model, although with different numbers. It seemed to range anywhere from like 30% faster in the extreme worst cases up to like 65% faster in the best cases, but a more typical result seemed to be closer to a 50% lead. And you know, you can't benchmark every game in the world and get an actual average. Although if I compare to other review sites, like for example, Tech Power Up, if you set the 6800 XT as a baseline, um, and then look at the percentages they're getting for their 7900 XT and XTX, they're at like 27% faster for the XT, 51% faster for the 7900 XTX. So in other words, pretty in line with what I'm seeing from other reviewers, so I think it's fair to call it like 1.3 and 1.5. So if you scale off the um, the $650 MSRP, then we're seeing that the 7900 XT is, well, first of all, MSRP at $900 and is available for that price. If you if you pop into like PC Part Picker, uh, you can find it at its its $900 price or a little bit above. So the 7900 XT, uh, MSRP, it's actually available for that price, but is that a good deal? No. <laughs> now also I would say that the 7900 XT, in my opinion, is more of the actual successor, successor to the 6800 XT, since it didn't, um, you know, last time around we didn't get the two different, you know, we didn't get the XTX model on top, so it's the second step down from their in initial launched high-end GPU. and that would put us at 845 and okay, maybe if you adjust for inflation, we're at that $900 price point, but what that gets you is stagnation in pricing uh, from generation to generation. Because normally when a new GPU generation launches, you get better performance at a similar pricing. And I think the only way that you would say that we're seeing that is if you compare it to the MSRP of the 6900 XT, or 6950 XT, which were at $1,000. But guys, those were already considered bad value and they didn't hold those prices for very long. Um, it, for, for months now, 
uh, uh, 6,900 XTs have been priced well below this. But in general, I think the best value at the high end there was at MSRP, the 6,800 XT from the AMD lineup and on its real world pricing. So basically if we scale off of MSRP, we're seeing stagnation, if not worse than stagnation. Stagnation only if you allow for inflation, okay? <laughs> If we pay, base it off of real world, world pricing, where you can just yesterday get a $570 6800 XT, um, then we're seeing much, much worse than stagnation. We're seeing um, just bad value overall. Meaning if we scaled it up from the current pricing on a 6800 XT new, then the fair a fair price for the 7900 XT would be closer to $740 and for the XTX around $850 if it scaled price to, uh, you know if it, if the performance scaled from a baseline set at the uh, 6800 XT and none of this is even taking into account the fact that you can get used 6800 XTs for less than this so overall i think the prices on the 7000 series need to come down now that being said i do think they offer interesting performance so it didn't seem like we saw any meaningful um, increase to ray tracing performance other than just how the rasterized performance increased proportionally. Um, but it did mean that you could now enable some ray tracing, especially at 1440p, um, and still get playable frame rates. In my other videos, you've seen that like the 7900 XTX is now as good or better at ray tracing than something like a 3080 or a 3090 in light ray tracing workloads um, better and in heavier ray tracing workloads kind of brought down more even with the 3080. Now, um, so in other words, I think the ray tracing is more usable now, but I still think that if you're heavily interested in ray tracing, going the NVIDIA route makes more sense here. So. Uh, where did these GPUs shine? I think they really shine at 1440p rasterized performance. And honestly, the, the ray tracing hit in um, Unreal Engine 5 that we saw with Fortnite wasn't too bad. Although we don't know um, if other Unreal Engine 5 games will take a bigger hit to that um, ray tracing performance. The thing is, though, that at 4K, I thought that even the 7900 XTX would have to make some um, some image quality compromises, turn down to high settings, use some upscaling or both to get frame rates that I think people would really be looking for in the most n new graphically demanding games that we'd expect to be see coming out over the next few years. And with that in mind, um, I think that these GPUs really are best targeted at high refresh rate 1440p if you're looking for cranking all the settings all the way. Now, when we say that then though, it's like, well, the 6800 XT is still a pretty dang good 1440p graphics card, as long as you're not trying to trace those rays. So, <laughs> and the 7000 series still isn't that strong at ray tracing. So I guess what I'm saying is, currently at their current prices, I think a value-oriented buyer should look at the 6800 XT still if you're thinking 1440p. If you have the budget and want to push it, I'm not saying don't push it into that 7900 class, but that XT model especially, given the fact that the 7900 XT is still sitting in stock at $900, and we're expecting it to soon get an NVIDIA competitor, if we look at the um, rumored pricing that we looked at, um, in my video yesterday as of the time of filming. I don't know if I'll post this today or not. Um, we're, we'll be expecting to get a 4070 Ti at, at like maybe an $800 MSRP, something like that. I would expect to see this price to have to come down soon. So I just think now is kind of the wrong time to buy the 7900 XT. And the XTX, unfortunately, did sell out at its $1,000 price point. And I expect it to restock at times at that price. But currently, it's sitting around $1,200 or up for the models that are actually in stock. And you can get a 4080 for those same prices. 
And look at my video comparing the 4080 with the 7900 XTX. And I think the 4080 is overall better. So if they cost the same, I think that one makes more sense. So I guess what I'm getting at here is I think the 7000 series pricing needs to drop. Um, and if you're looking at 1440p AMD GPUs for um, pretty solid performance at, at the best value, I think it's still the 6800 XT offering that if you can catch one of the better deals on it. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.